So uh, one of the one of the really neat things that happened this week is um, I don't know how how long it's been. It's been maybe for the last couple of years or whatever. Those that have been around me in ministry have heard me using this phrase. I'll say things like, "I've I, I've waited my whole life to see this happen." How many of you that have been in ministry with me around here have heard me say that over the last couple of years? You've heard me, okay? And and I'm amazed. It's like it's like, Lord, what are you doing? One of the reasons that we call fan fan. One of the reasons we use the word acceleration is because we have sensed in the Holy Spirit an acceleration occurring. That the Holy Spirit is moving in people's lives to move them to maturity much quicker than we've ever seen in the past. Uh, now, now <clears throat> we're still human. <laughs> Or at least I am. <coughs> Excuse me. You're all... Yeah, anyway. Uh, anyone not human, please raise your hand. No, thank you very much. I appreciate that. See me afterwards. Kevin, yeah, me, no. It's okay. The rest of us are from planet Earth, and Kevin's from Boston. It's a whole different... Whole different deal over there. Whole different... But I had one of those things happen again this week, uh, and I, I don't want to—I don't want uh, to to embarrass anyone. But but the Lord pointed out someone, and 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 by the Holy Spirit confirmed with witnesses, advanced this person like that. And the interesting thing was that in doing so. I thought it was about the person, and as I as I left, the Holy Spirit is saying to me, "I'm establishing a new order in Portland for the body of Christ." Isn't that awesome? I'm raising up the humble. Mm. Wow. I'm establishing my order, not man's order, across this city in the body of Christ in Portland. <laughs> Amen. One body. One body. So Father, we thank you for order. And, 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 and you know, the, the cool thing about order is that when, when we see the Lord establishing something like that, you know, we've sensed acceleration, now we're, we're sensing order, we're sensing this covering that's occurring. And as that happens, it builds trust. It builds trust. Uh, you know, you take a risk and you step out on something, right? You know, it's just like just like we saw on the on the video. It was perfect. I had no idea how you knew that I needed that for my sermon illustration. Thank you, David. But you 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 know, and you, and you feel like you're stepping out onto nothing. You know, but you learn to trust Jesus. That when he says step, you step, and something occurs. Right? Interesting. We, we, uh, uh, again, man, what a great worship time. And and, you know, uh, we've sung that song for quite a while now about about stepping out upon the waters. You know. And you know what? A question for you. As a believer, do you? Do you learn more when everything's going your way or when you're in the middle of a storm? It's the storm. It's the storm. Here's the only funny part. As, as, as little human Christians, we puny little human Christians tend to pray, God, keep the storm away. And the Holy Spirit is saying, what? I've worked for years to get you into the middle of that storm, and now you're praying that it goes away. And the reason I want you in the middle of that storm is that I, I, I intend to establish my order and your faith in me so that I can move you into places where you can bring my light that no one else is going to go. You 
are specifically designed to take the power of Jesus into the darkest corners of this city because your own design has made it so that when you arrive, the, the power of the Holy Spirit and the light of Jesus will emanate from your life and devastate darkness across this city. And it's a funny thing about darkness. I also learned something funny about darkness this week. You know, we, we tend, as preachers, the way we do this is that we take an illustration, we take it too far, make a simple statement. I'm, I'm kidding, but, you know, you've heard it said, you've heard it said that, you know, light destroys darkness. It's true. Light does destroy darkness. But did you realize that light has, each light has its own limited capability. If I light a light in Gresham and it's dark in Beaverton, it's still going to be dark in Beaverton. Some of you got that. Some of you already got where I was going with that. The light that you light <clears throat> moves from person to person across this neighborhood and through this city. But we do not we, we do not light one light and say, look, there it is. It illumines. No, it, 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 is, it is all of us. It is every single one of you. It is each of you moving into the faith and the power of Jesus Christ in your own unique createdness that carries the light that has to be carried to the place that he has you at this moment. So we've talked about faith and uh, I'm going to ask you, if you're here today and, and you say, I'm in the middle of a storm right now that I don't feel like I have the faith to walk through, did you catch that? I'm going to ask you to be bold enough to stand where you're at right now. Does that apply to anyone? You're in the middle of a storm, and you don't know if you have the faith to get through. Look around, okay? Look around. Let's, let's extend a hand right now. I want everyone extending a hand, and we're going to pray over these people right now in the name of Jesus. Father, increase the faith. Strengthen the feet and legs. Let them stand where they thought they could not stand. Let them walk where they thought they could not walk. Lord, fill them with your presence for this storm, for this moment, because, Jesus, you love to do that. So in your name, we release faith by the power of the Holy Spirit right now into their lives, into their situation. Amen. A seat. And I want you guys that were standing to take confidence. Let's do it this way. How many of you have come through a storm and you're now your your faith is now increased? You've made it through that storm recently, and you want to testify that Jesus is the Lord of the storm. Would you please stand? Come on, somebody. Let's do this. Let's repeat after me. Jesus, thank you that you carry us through the storms, but you also teach our feet to walk in places we never thought we could stand. 
Thank you, Lord. Amen. Have a seat. Yeah. 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 You know what we call that? We call that maturity, brother. The immature brother gets, you know, he survives the storm and he's, and he's going, and, and, but, but then he takes his eyes off Jesus. And so he's like, okay, <laughs> help me, Jesus. And Jesus is kind. He reaches down, grabs him, takes him up, gets him in the boat. Looks at him and probably thinks, Peter, you got a long road ahead of you. <laughs> well, that's cool. That's cool. We're going to talk about mature, maturity in a minute. The next one is provision. Provision. Um, you know, it, it, it's interesting. I don't know how many of you have about probably almost all of you. The Lord puts us in places where we're at a point, and we also put ourselves in places, that's true, where, where we're at a point and we go, man, how on earth am I, is this going to work out? You ever been there? Almost all of us have, right? Isn't that interesting? But the Holy Spirit wants us to pray for that today. So, and, and I don't care, you can either, actually, uh, we can even do this just as a group. But, but someone here, and it may be you, you're in a place where you need provision, and you're like, Lord, I don't even know how to trust you for this. Would you be bold enough? If you want to raise your hand, if that's you, if, if, if you're bold enough, raise your hand. If not, we'll just pray as a group. Let's just pray as a group. Or we, we ask, oh, right there. Okay, brother, I see that hand. Father, right now in your name. Lord, some of us have stepped out on the water. We're walking in places that we never thought we'd go. We want to get to the other side. But Lord, we have no idea how you're going to provide. And Father, I pray that you would open the windows of heaven. Look, Lord, that you would help us trust you, not just with our tithe. But like, like, uh, like Susan was, was speaking the other day, with faith giving, where we're actually seeding into other ministries, where we're giving seed money and trusting God to... Uh, move in our situations, in our ministries, in our lives, in our families. So, Father, in your name, not only increase our faith, but, Father, show us your, the, the, your hand of provision. And specifically for the brother that was, that was um, uh, bold enough to raise his hand and say, that might be me, I might, I might be that one, Lord. In your name, bless that brother like there is no tomorrow. <laughs> but bless him above and beyond. Bless him like, like he's your favorite son. Because he is, along with your other favorite son. In your name. Amen. Amen. Hey, thank you for letting me do those. I, 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 some, some days I'd rather, I'd rather minister than preach. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just more fun, I guess, you know? Christian recreation, right? Okay. Jumping off the jumping off the uh the the uh jumping off the cliff. I'm gonna read a passage to you. Um And, and, I, and I'm not going to tell you what it is, and I don't want it up on the screen yet. Um, 
But I was listening earlier this week. I was listening to this worship time, and and the worship leader just read this passage, and I I loved it. So I'm going to read it to you. Um, and we'll just we'll just let the Holy Spirit speak through it, and then we'll come back and touch on a few points, and we'll be done. We're getting close now. The mature children of God are those who are moved by the impulses of the Holy Spirit. And you did not receive the spirit of religious duty, leading you back into the fear of never being good enough, but you have received the spirit of full acceptance, enfolding you into the family of God, and you will never feel orphaned, for he rises up within us. Our spirits join him in saying the words of tender affection, Beloved Father. For the Holy Spirit makes God's fatherhood real to us. He whispers into our innermost being, You are God's beloved child. And since we are his true children, we qualify to share all his treasures. For indeed, we are heirs of God himself. And since we are joined to Christ, we also inherit all that he is and all that he has. We will experience being co-glorified with him provided that we accept his suffering as our own. Isn't that interesting? A um, couple, of, couple of things I want to point out real quickly. Um, first of all, I love this verse. And I, and I, I am learning. I am, I am a child learning this. The mature children of God are those who are moved by the impulses of the Holy Spirit. Wow. Let me ask you something. What moves you? <laughs> right? I'm too often, man, it's little things for me, like somebody says something and I get moved. Not, not in a good way. <laughs> I, just get, I just get moved, you know. Like moved from peace to anger. <laughs> right? Or move or move from move from joy to to anxiety. Karen, did you hear what he said? Did you hear that? Can you believe that, that person said that to you? You know? So what? Right? We get moved. We get moved, you know. Um, we get moved by bizarre things. Uh, <coughs> I don't know how many of you have, have given up on watching the news, but I'm really close. Because well, I'm I'm pretty strong, you know what I'm saying? I, <laughs> Thank you for the laughter. Uh, somebody knew I was lying. Anyway, um, but you know what? I, I'm not. You can't be moved by it. You can't be moved by it. You know, stuff's happening. Okay, stuff's happening. I'm not moved. I'm not moved. In faith. Okay. Now, now I'm not saying I, me. I mean, I'm saying it. If I were the mature believer, I wouldn't be moved. Uh, anyway, thank you. Yeah. So, yeah. But, and, and, you know, it's interesting. I, I was talking to a, a sister this morning, and uh, I asked her about something that, that, uh, that was going on. And she goes, you know, Steve, she said, uh, I've been in so much joy between, between Saturday and today that I'm refusing to be moved 
from my joy. Yeah, that might be wisdom. Maturity. You know what? We're the we we are the blood bought, spirit filled, Holy Ghost led children of God. He's paid for us to walk into eternity with him. He is preparing a place for us to enjoy eternity with him. What some little demon does or doesn't do on this side of eternity is of very little consequence to us. It's of very little consequence to us. We're on a path. We've already talked about the mission. We're on a mission. We are attempting to move our lives to the place where they reflect the glory of God all the time. Now, you're going to be distracted. <laughs> I'm going to go home this afternoon, and I will immediately be distracted. <laughs> You might, too. My problem is I've got kids, you know. If I didn't have kids, I would be a perfect human being. <laughs> he, said he said lying to everyone in the room. Sorry. But we get distracted. But even the distraction, don't let it move you so much. But, but Steve, what if I blow it? Well, I blow it. What you do is not stay there. Don't camp there. For Pete's sake, don't roll around in it. Because if you roll around in it, Satan will begin to use it to eat away at who you are and who you were designed to be. And wherever you are in that process, his plan for you today is a good plan. His plan for you today is to mature you. His plan for you today is to affirm that you are his child. His plan for you today is that eventually you will be co-glorified with him. You will get to share in the glory of the resurrected Christ in a very few years. Seventy, a hundred, and you won't be walking on this planet. The other day I said something so profound. <laughs> I, I looked at somebody and I told them, I said, hey, I said, uh, I said, you know what? We're all dying a day at a time. <laughs> Is it profound? We're exiting, man. We're out of here. While you're here, be a conduit for the release of the kingdom of God where you are in the city where he's planted you, in the home where he's planted you, in the workplace where he's planted you, be open to the Holy Spirit maturing you so that what moves you are the impulses of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, I love you. And I thank you for your word and for, for what you teach us. And I ask, Father, this day that, that you would 
seal everything that you've done this weekend. That you would remind us throughout this week of who we are and what we're about. Thank you, Father, that we have that, that we are true children of God. And that we can learn to move by the impulse, by the impulse of the Holy Spirit. Father, I ask for every person in this room that their focus and direction would be towards aligning their lives with your Holy Spirit so that you can use them fully as they move towards eternity. Lord, let us spend our limited days in your service. Amen. Some of you, uh, uh, you're saying, wow, that was weird. And, uh, and, and, you know, for some of you, maybe you've never, ever given your lives to Jesus. Uh, maybe you didn't even know that was possible. But when he died on the cross, he paid for all your sins. All your sins. So let me, let, let me make that invitation simple. If there's anyone here today and you say, hey, I haven't accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior, and I'd like to. Or today, I need to, I need to recommit my life to Christ. I invite you to just raise your hand wherever you are today. I, I see you right here in the middle. Anyone else? All right, let's pray. Pray after me, Jesus. We thank you that indeed you died to save us from our sins. And you rose to give us new life. And Father, we accept that new life today. We repent of our sins. And we ask you to be our Savior and our Lord. In Jesus' name.